We're back with The Run, talking about whether national security and energy security are really that closely linked. Patrick, you had pointed out that those on the left are more concerned about this. Melody, why is that the case? I think that uh, those on, of us on the left you know, would like to see a limit of war and military expenditure. And I think that the, um, this exposes one of the fundamental hypocrisies on the right, that with their worship of all things military, yet they won't pay attention to what the military says about climate, climate change being uh, one of the greatest threats that we face. And not just, um, and because of what it's going to do with other countries, so mm -hmm. refugees and all of that. And the military's plans to gradually change to more uh, alternative energy, getting off of fossil fuels, because it makes more sense for them in the field. Um, it's less costly. So if we were really serious about all the other things that go with that, which is lowering the, the federal budget, lowering you know the, the cost of energy all across the board, then, then it seems to me that they would pay attention. You're not so going to get solar-powered tanks. I yeah. It's not about solar-powered tanks. We're not going to get solar-powered aircraft carriers. But no one is asking for joke. that. No, yeah. no, no one is asking for that. We're, we're, we're going to talk about the military in a moment. Because the military do have, does have some, some ideas about where they could use alternative energy. But, yeah, and the they, they put it out there. So. They've actually got a mandate to overthrow. And Congress is trying yeah. to overthrow that and trying to dictate what the yeah. military can do. What, 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 about, what, what about the defense argument, though, Melody? I mean, speaking for the left, yeah. uh, what about the, the reliance that we have on a, a product, a commodity, whose price is constantly uh, jumping up and down? It happens to be low right now. Uh, do you connect that to our economic security? Yes, I do. And also to the fact that we are held hostage every in our politics to the price of oil. Patrick, you know, when you think about if you were investing for your own retirement, uh, no matter how much you love the oil sector, you would never put 100% or even 50% of your stocks in the oil sector. You'd diversify. Uh, why shouldn't the country do exactly that with something as important as our energy supply? Well, I mean, if you were you'd picking, you, you'd, you'd want to diversify, but you also look for yield. And the fact is that oil is the most sort of energy intensive, cheapest fuel out there for most purposes for which we need it. And so it makes sense to stick to that for now. Is, it, is that ideal? Not necessarily, but there's but you, you know the, the cost there's a cost to diversifying and there's a benefit to it there's a benefit to it as well but if if the benefits don't outweigh the cost and it's not actually worth it externalities are not right priced in. Not, that's never, the problem no it's, it's that's actually the problem. coal especially but don't mean by, by externalities well, externalities of the pollution that's created from oil and gas and coal is not priced in to when when you're just buying a per unit of energy right. That, those externalities of pollution are not priced in. The externalities of climate change that are caused by those things, especially in coal, that's the worst offender. Uh, you know, natural gas a little bit better than coal, but for coal, right, which is the cheapest per unit of kilowatt hour electricity, it's got horrible uh, particulate matters. It's got horrible carbon emissions, and you know that has to change. So, so that's that's absolutely true. But but the but the the, the things that um, Melody was talking about much earlier, the like the Clean Water Act, the, the Clean Air Act. So those things, those were externalities that were sort of readily that you could price in because you're saying like, oh, like this is actually having very obvious health effects on people in the near term. So when you talk about but pricing and pricing, and I, 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 well, no, I understand that, but, to, but to, to, to say that we can sort of price in the externality, the externality, the costs that come with climate change is, well, is carbon extra, tax. extraordinarily but it's also, use it's yes. extraordinarily but it's also difficult not to do. Just pollution air pollution, right? I mean, we've had all these oil uh, pipeline leaks in the Kalamazoo River, the crude oil, the, the tar sands oil, which has been two years and they still can't clean it up. They don't know how to deal with it. The trains that are exploding all over this country and Canada. Oh, pipelines. What? No, we don't. The, the, the entire community in Arkansas that had to be evacuated, the loss of an entire community any, that is sitting on... No, but this is... this is a, industrial any time. Right, so that's all okay. Has, has oh yeah, that's all okay. I, that we never deal with the, the actual... Pay for it. No, I, they don't. Not to be, it's do. never Jonathan, fully cleaned I, up. I think, I think we, we should, on this show and as a country, we have to have a, a much broader discussion of the whole issue of, of climate change. But specifically to get to this issue of externalities, it's really important to point out that there is enormous environmental damage that's done by renewables. Uh, specifically, hydroelectric power causes the destruction of rivers, and wind power has been a disaster over the country. It hasn't worked economically, and it's led to the death of large, no it's also, it's, it's a blight on the landscape, and it's led to the death of vast numbers of animals. This, these are serious things. I mean, if you, if you drive out in the desert in Southern California towards Palm Springs, you see these gigantic wind farms, which the California government paid for, which don't pay for themselves, and you see all these dead birds. 
And this is not just something well, we California- we need to experiment with some of those renewable energies or we're never gonna get off of coal and oil and gas. Right, and, and we need to get gas, out of coal and oil and gas over time. Yes, also, but we cannot, nuclear, take, we cannot take the point of Nuclear is a good option. Absolutely. Great option. We not cannot, until we get, know we how cannot, to get rid of the waste. We well, actually, we just, they're, they're learning, learning how to get rid of yeah, the waste. We now have three companies in the United States that are, that are developing technology yeah. to run nuclear power plants off of nuclear waste from other nuclear power plants. So you wouldn't have the waste problem. And but that needs it, to be assisted. Actually, we need, government needs to it, get in there and also, actually right. not only help solar and wind, which I agree with, but also help the newest technologies in nuclear to make it safe. And if it's right, all we so don't, difficult, we to, wait, why wait, wait. are some countries in Europe able to do it? They do Germany, an extraordinarily right? high cost. Uh, but, energy but, yeah. prices, electricity prices in Germany are sky high. And it's a real problem. And, right. and yet their and, economy and, is and, booming. And, and, their economy is booming. They are beating us. Well, not, it could be for entirely low separate reasons. Right, but it doesn't matter. No, let me say, you can have and, both. Wait, 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 wait. wait and that's a very specific thing. Failing. There are German chemical companies that have been relocating their operations yeah. to the United States. Why? Because the cost of natural gas is very low. The cost of energy in general is very low in the United States. Why is a lot of aluminum produced in the United States? Again, low energy costs. So low energy costs is a significant advantage. Um, is it the only thing we should look at in terms of making national policies? I would say not. But you cannot ignore the fact that low energy costs provide benefits not only to consumers but in terms of jobs. And I think that's, that's one of the things we try and to And that's where fracking about. helps but the also, environment. I want to get back to yeah. no, we it. No, it actually does about, because you know, it creates natural, natural gas. Oh, if we're talking oh, about yeah. 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 Yes, absolutely. Yeah. If we're talking about renewables, though, we also we cannot have a Pollyannish attitude. Forgive me for using cliche expression. We cannot have this attitude of renewables. Everything is glorious and great. And there are no problems of pollution or environmental degradation. No there one are says that. Problems. Look, no one says that because the, the, the ethanol experiment was a disaster, and everybody acknowledges that. Forty percent of our corn production. Right, going and it costs more. It, it causes more pollution to produce it than it when it that it burns. That's it right. also entirely screwed up the price of corn, made it unavailable in Mexico as a staple crop. So, so no one is arguing that there's a panacea anywhere. But the the the, the reality is that the this kind of conversation, the in-depth, the complexity of it, is not allowed to be had. And when you have a Congress, a right-wing Congress, that wants to step in and dictate to the military that they have to buy X amount of, you know, gallons of oil and they have to stick to fossil fuel, regard, I mean, see, again, the, the hypocrisy. I don't think that's what I heard. Yes, there are people, yes, there are people who have been against it. Uh, yes, they have. When the, the military puts out their, their recommendations and their studies around the if, impact of climate change and what they want to be able to do and how they want to upgrade certain areas of their operations to use more renewable fuels, to be more uh, energy independent itself, then Congress steps in and wants to start rewriting the yeah, rules. Yeah, because it's an extraordinarily wasteful idea, as Anders was saying earlier. I mean, it's just the, 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 uh, the Pentagon, and especially the civilian parts of it, are it's not so different from every other federal bureaucracy. So it kind of leans left, and they have these... The ah. crazy ideas, and so the, that, you know the, right. the, they have like it's extraordinarily costly, and so it's a huge that they have right. these, these are the green navy. All the rest I mean, of the things, trillion dollar and, and, and military budget there's makes simply sense, no, but this sim doesn't. There's simply right? no way that you're going to be able mm -hmm. to run things to do what the military needs with renewable energy anytime soon. So even if it made sense for the economy at large, you need such energy intensity for for the op for the operations the military is engaged in that that only things like nuclear and, and oil make sense. And so it's it's on just it's side. just an awful idea. I just think side. it's very short sighted. The vast majority. Well, of the military is a short sighted. They got to win wars. <laughs> but, oh right, the, which we don't need half of. On the well, civilian that, side. Wait, wait, that gets to a really important point. You're talking about this issue of uh, energy independence. Why did we go into Iraq the first time in the Gulf War? Right. The President well, the George, President George H. W. Bush said this is what he said, to, not in public, but yeah. he said to among other people, King Hussein of Jordan. He said, "We cannot allow this one man, that is Saddam Hussein, to control 20 percent of the proven reserves of oil in the world. So our reliance on on foreign oil, and more than that, our allies' reliance on foreign oil." was the principal cause of no. that war. No. So yes. that wasn't a Kuwait invasion. It was not yes. about oil. We did not get anything in terms of oil. The Chinese got all the oil cause. contracts in Iraq. But I mean, that that's was ridiculous. That's not, not what in, in. No, no. We spent Anders, all the money and China took all the oil contracts. Because we screwed it up so bad. Melly, Jonathan, I'm not claiming, nor did George H.W. Bush claim that the aim was the enrichment of the United States. But he was saying that he was concerned about the effects of one person, a violent dictator, 
hostile to the United States, controlling so much of the proven reserves of petroleum in the world, and that that was the principal motive no, of our decision. It was not the principal That's motive. what he but said. Also, That's what he told people. But our alliance is with all the Middle Eastern yeah. dictators, it's also based on their ability to deliver oil to us. For us to no, be yes, it is. No, it's also not. There are a lot is. of other strategic reasons. They're not right. very nice but alliances to have. But there would be have, no strategic reasoned for the United States to be in the Middle East if there wasn't oil. That's where it comes from. Anyway, now that we have shale, all of that is going away. Well, it's right? not. We are not as concerned it's about not. the Middle East and their oil now as we were in the past Usually. because we have oh, shale. Oh my we have shale. Oh. We have our own source. We have a lot of energy independence. We have an incredible nuclear facility capability for, elect for electricity in the United States. We shouldn't be so worried about energy independence. We actually want to export energy. We export so much coal all around the world. We I make a lot of money of that. And there's right. a lot of jobs in that but, too. Right, but it's also destroying the planet. And that's the, you know, so the, the, this is where the tension between, oh, we're gonna have an in, in, in instantaneous impact on something, or we're gonna, you know, That's see why you need a global carbon years. tax, right? Well, more or, and more, you need more than that. The link between national security and military security. Americans disagree. What does the military have to say? Next up on The Run.